Good afternoon, folks. We're going to go over two recent stories that have implications for the ongoing reset of the disaster cycle. The Mars Global Auroral Record and its place in the solar system shift is up first. So the story comes on the heels of what has continued to be modest space weather this sunspot cycle, despite sunspot numbers exceeding last cycle's marks. They have been able to see auroral activity on Mars for a while now, but this is the first time global auroral activity has had an outbreak like this, very much like Earth's auroral records set last year. We can't blame this outbreak on the sun as it's nominal in power and significantly lower than it was in previous cycles. The best explanation for this is a continuing change in the magnetic field of the red planet and all the planets. The solar system shift so far has seen atmospheric decompression on Pluto, with a fifth of its atmosphere lost in just one year, something not at all unexpected with a magnetic shift on a planet. Neptune has had its famous storm reversal and rapid cooling event, both of which are not unexpected with the magnetic shift. Uranus has seen record auroras and storm activity the last 15 years, also certainly expected with the magnetic shift on a planet. Saturn's early superstorm indicates more solar energy is getting in, and without major solar activity to blame for that, we have to presume its field is letting in that more energy. Jupiter has had several storm anomalies, but its electron radio waves from within the field having a shift is one of the clearest planetary signals of a magnetic change in the entire solar system. Mars has had climate and seismological changes, but this recent auroral outbreak is something that directly implicates a planetary electromagnetic state change, while the climate and seismic indicators were indirect indications only. Earth has obviously had anomalies from the magnetic field down to the crust, with the tie to the magnetic field sometimes being expressly confirmed, sometimes strongly implied. Venus's wind speed records are something expected with the magnetic shift on a planet. Mercury is not on the list because we need to wait for Bepi Colombo's look at its magnetic field in the coming years. The Sun is having coronal chemistry and magnetic changes, and in the interplanetary space, the IPS, we have extra ions, extra neutrals, and extra dust as well, all from the galactic current sheet, seen from the corona out past Pluto. So as the solar system shift aspect marches on, the other story we wanted to hit is from this morning, the idea that light energy can trigger evaporation independent of heat. I feel like this is something most of us presume to be true for various reasons already, but as the story mentioned the effect on lakes, oceans, and clouds, it is worth mentioning that the magnetic field loss at Earth should be amplifying this process among all the others. Just when you think you've got all the signs and signals figured out, a new one pops up only to remind you that this shift is going to change and impact literally everything about our world. And in terms of climate, I would love to wonder if they will go back and change the models to account for this, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Not with these people in charge. Anyway, the pole shift, solar system change and reset of the disaster cycle marches on. Subscribe and I will see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.